Hi everyone, thanks for watching my channel. I'm not a lawyer, I'm just someone who uh, wanted to uh, pick up a few things from the um, appeal that Amber Heard filed and uh, talk about it. The first point that I would like to go over is uh, this that says, first, the trial court erroneously excluded as hearsay articles relevant to depth reputation prior to publications of the op-ed. The articles, however, were not hearsay, as Heard sought to admit them not for, truth, not for the truth of the matters asserted in the articles, but to show the state of Depp's public reputation prior to the publication of the op-ed. Not too long ago, The Sun published that Captain Jack was back, and Johnny Depp will return to Pirates of the Caribbean as Jack Sparrow, five years on from the last movie. Daily Mail, on the other hand, says that he's not returning to Pirates of the Caribbean. So, using these articles as a way to judge Johnny Depp's reputation when he was working while they were married, he was working after they were married, he was working after the TRO, the problems really began after she wrote the op-ed. Because of the UK proceeding and the significant corresponding media attention, by November 2nd, 2020, the world already saw him as a domestic abuser. Nonetheless, the trial court kept that critical information from the jury. My question, though, is domestic abuser of who? Amber Heard lied. She falsely accused him. So whether it was before the 2018 or before 2022 or before 2020, it still all comes back to Amber Heard. She ruined his life. And the op-ed links everything back to 2016. We have said that one with an unblemished reputation is entitled to more damages when subjected to defamatory statements than one whose reputation is little hurt by the statements. Well, let's first start with the definition of reputation. So I went to a, a legal site to get a legal um, definition here. Reputation is the general esteem held of the person's character and comportment. Regarding trial proceedings under Federal Rule of Evidence, Rule 405, when evidence on a person's character is admissible, it may be proved through testimony on that person's reputation. Here's another legal definition. A reputation is a person's good name, honor, or what the community thinks of him or her. And so uh, what I did was ask a few people on Twitter what they felt about Johnny Depp's reputation before the TRO. And one person here says, there were, there, there were so many levels of Johnny before this so-called destruction was put in effect. I followed Johnny from Nightmare on Elm Street until now. He was a free spirit. He made people laugh, cry, and ponder throughout his movie career. He's a given and kind-hearted man. Someone else said that Johnny is charitable. He loved helping, especially sick children. Karen, humble, sincere, kind, generous, with a fierce love and protective instinct for family and all he loves. Extremely talented and far more given of himself than any celebrity public figure. Also adorably mysterious and harmlessly mischievous. Respected by those who work with him as actor, musician, charity worker, he's the man who envelopes a character with his heart, makes us laugh, cry, and forget our troubles for a while. The man who visits sick children and gives them hope. He's a multifaceted amalgamation of genius. Here are pictures that basically capture what people saw of Johnny Depp. His family, uh, his charity work, and his talent. Also, people who worked with him have nothing but good things to say about him. Okay, so going from that reputation to the reputation of being accused of being the uh, a perpetrator of sexual violence is a huge deal because no one wants to be associated with a sexual predator or a rapist or anything like that. We saw earlier that reputation basically depends on how the community views a particular individual. So... Um, on Twitter, I pulled up a tweet that basically um, expresses how some of Johnny Depp's own supporters felt after they saw the um, public tiaro.
Uh, this paragraph basically talks about the damages being too much, being excessive. So it says, Deb failed to prove any pecuniary damages resulting from the op-ed during that time, and he did not seek emotional distress damages, leaving reputational harm as his only possible source of damages. The jury's verdict of $10 million in compensatory damages is grossly disproportionate to any reputational harm the op-ed could have caused during that small window. Here's Johnny Depp's filmography um, through time. I believe some indie movies might not be here. This I got from Fandango.com. And basically, you can see all the way to 2018, he was making movies. And he was making a lot of movies while they were together, when they, after the TRO, once they made the joint statement, everything was back to normal again. And then after 2018, there are no more movies. And that, to me, proves right there that the op-ed had a huge impact. And that Between the years of 2017 and 2019, he made a few movies here. Murder on the Orient Express, $10 million. Uh, Crimes of Grindelwald in 2018, I believe, is $13.5 million. Um, he was paid $8 million for City of Lies. And then I think by the time he made Waiting for the Barbarians, which is after the... Um, op-ed, um, he only took home uh, $1 million. But my point is that when he loses, because he's a top earner in Hollywood, when he loses, that's not a little hurt. It's a lot of money each movie that he's not making because he's not being called in for the job. This here is always interesting to me. The court improperly in admitted evidence that encouraged the jury to award damages for conduct unrelated to Hurt's op-ed, specifically evidence of reputational harm stemming from Hurt's 2016 restraining order. Um, the op-ed basically says that two years ago, Amber Heard became a victim of domestic violence. If that's true, two years before 2018 is 2016. And so showing up with a bruised up face that could not, bruises that could not have come out, come from Johnny Depp, those are pretty significant because if she lied in 2016, then she must be lying if she's referring back to it in 2018. Just a reminder, three of her friends who spent time with her uh, dur uh, during the week of May 21st to May 27th, um, basically did not see any bruises on the 24th and 25th. The last day that Johnny Depp saw Amber Heard was May 21st. So if there are no bruises on 24, 24th and 25th, how are there bruises on the 27th? This is the last section that I'm going to go over today. In this regard, he bears emphasis, there is a significant difference between proof of actual malice and mere proof of falsity. Depp cannot prevail merely by proving that the abuse did not occur. Rather, to establish actual malice by clear and convincing evidence, he was required to offer affirmative evidence that Heard did not believe he had abused her or entertained serious doubts about whether he had done so. Um, I'm going to move over to the bottom highlighted section here because actual malice is a subjective standard whether Heard believed Depp abuse her must be judged by her own state of mind. What I'm hoping here is that they're not going with the um, insanity plea because she clearly uh, knew there was nothing on her face that morning of May 27th, 2016. She knew that. If she didn't, she wouldn't have put a bruise on her face, whether she painted it, injected it, punched herself, whatever she did. If she was sure that there was a bruise and she could see it, why did she add an extra one that we all can now see? So it's I, I really truly hope that they're not going for uh, an, an insanity plea because I believe that the appellate judges can see through that. Like I said earlier, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm just someone who looked at the um, appeal brief and just wanted to touch on a few things that I thought were pretty interesting. Um, my hope is that, you know, she'll lose, Johnny Depp will win as he should because she abused him and then she accused him of abusing her, which is like double abuse in my opinion. So I hope everything goes well. Um, but from everything that I'm seeing, I'm feeling good knowing that they have absolutely nothing. 
And so thank you, thank you so much for watching.